Hey y'all, hey y'all, hey y'all. This is Coach Rose AJ, Carnivore Girl for Life, coming to holla at y'all. Today is Thursday, May 23rd, y'all. It's a good day. Um, tomorrow, my La Nietas, which are my granddaughters, it is going to be their eighth birthday. I cannot believe it that my little peeps, my little ride or dies are going to be eight tomorrow on May 24th. Y'all, I just want to talk to y'all almost quick in a hurry. Um, life is good my way. How is life going your way, you guys? Has spring sprung? Right. So it's a holiday weekend coming up and I am off for four days, you guys, four days. And I am really looking forward to four days. So um, what do you guys normally do on Memorial Day? Is it another day or do you guys celebrate, take the boat out on some water, barbecue? Tell me y'all, what do y'all do? I normally just do my normal thing, go work out, go hang out with the family and just eat regular and just do what I do. It's a day off for me, right? So uh, what I want to touch bases with you guys on is a book that I'm reading called The Body Keeps the Score. And I should actually take that back. Let me take that back. I ordered it on Audible and I just started it. And I was made aware of it maybe about two years ago, if that, um, because I like to read a lot. I like you know, listening to books, especially like when I'm working and stuff like that during the school year, but I try to read about 10 books a summer. So with this, The Body Keeps the Score, the reason why I didn't step to it immediately is because the person that was reading it, um, we had had several conversations over the span of maybe a week or two in regards to it. And, um, she was saying that the content was really heavy and all that good stuff. And um, it made her think a lot, right? So I was like, well, it won't be an immediate read of mine because I didn't need anything during that time heavy, you know, heavy. I needed some fun stuff, some light stuff. So I put it off to the side. Well, this year I have been focusing on... Um, I've been focusing on how can I become my best self, right? How can I let go and just do me for me without some of the hangups that I currently have that have been left over from childhood um, that um, still kind of plague me, but I just push off to the side. And when I say plague me, you know, it's more like habits or thought processes, that um that kind of come up every now and again and that i still i would say consciously choose to overeat and if you guys don't know i grew up in a very chaotic very dysfunctional and very abusive home and my my natural biological father um, sexually abused me from the time that I was about three and a half until shortly before I was 17. And I was also exposed to other people that um, also abused me and whatnot. So my childhood was full of chaos, right? And I never did get professional help for it. And my way of healing and helping myself was essentially through bibliotherapy and trying different things and, you know, keeping what worked, throwing out what didn't, but I never gave up. And what really helped me through was my addiction to food. Let's just be honest, my addiction to food, constant companion. Um, and I can't even say that they were poor ch food choices. It was just my preference. It was my addiction of choice. And if you know anything about addiction, addiction is one disease with many outlets, you know, like you have a home or you have a classroom or you have an office. Um, it's one unit, but there's multiple outlets, you know, where you uh, get your source of power from multiple outlets. So my cross addictions um, were also alcohol. It was shopping. It was multiple hairstyles. 
It was uh, stealing when I was younger. Um, it was just compulsively overeating. That that what what it was was just endless cross addictions. And it was in 2020 when I finally understood. And when I say understood, that means the light bulbs went off, and I was connecting the dots, and I was understanding how the foods that I chose to put in my mouth severely affected my mental wellness as well as my emotional and physical health. And um, being a carnivore now, tried and true, 110, ride or die carnivore, there's this ultimate zen that I have, right? This ultimate zen. Um, I think I've always internally known that everything was going to be all right because of a higher power. But the foods that I was eating, the sugar, um, the fast foods, just stuffing my emotions down for all these years, ultimately created the ultimate breakdown when I was going through perimenopause in 2018. And I left my career, my 23-year career, because... God told me that if I tried to get to my 30-year retirement, that I would not be fully restored. Um, my mental health would not be fully restored, and um, I would spend the rest of my life trying to get out of a hellhole, essentially. So I cashed in my retirement probably a little over a year or about a year after I retired because I wanted to focus on my emotional and mental well-being. And then I re-entered the workspace probably at about 2022. And then the career that I'm in, I started just last year. So I don't know how long I'll be here, but I am a coach. I've taken multiple, multiple certifications since 2019 forward and some in my previous um time prior to that. But what I do want to say about The Body Keeps the Score, so I'm just listening to it on Audible right now, but I ordered the hard copy as well from Amazon and it's supposed to be here tomorrow. And the reason I am finally, you know, stepping to it and, um, you know, listening to it and I will be reading it and hopefully starting a book club and eventually having a review around this is, is because I have been working hard, very diligently and very patiently and very compassionately with some of the things that have been left over or that I've still been living with from childhood, right? And I used to always say, everybody else's story is more important than mine. They had it worse off than I did. I was just trying to shove it to the side all the while um, stuffing myself with 50,000 calories a day. I mean, that's probably an exaggeration, but literally from the morning, the time that I woke up in the morning to the time that I went to bed, um, just stuffing myself with food. And so what I do want to let you guys know is that really today is the most important day of your life today, not necessarily yesterday, not necessarily tomorrow. Today is the most important day of your life because we are in the present. What we do right here, right now counts, right? In our history, what happened yesterday, five years ago, or even 30 years ago, if it has an impact on us, meaning that if there were some lessons that were learned and um, we can keep with us today, that's going to help us today and into our future, then great. But history, history, what happened behind us has already happened. And essentially, there's nothing we can do about it, right? There's really nothing that we can do about it. And when I think about it in that context, as far as my abuse and how I wish things had played out differently, I'm like at the point where it is, it is what it is, right? I did the best I could um, getting through that torment just to survive. And then having a family of my own, I knew that I didn't want my daughter to be exposed to what I was exposed to. So I cut off my biological family with any means necessary with, except for a few exceptions. And then when my daughter turned 18, I cut everybody off. And the reason I waited until she was 18 was because she was an adult and she could make the decisions for herself. But the family members that I did choose to keep in touch with, I was resentful towards them, but to a degree, but they had never 
harmed me physically themselves. They harmed me in the sense that they didn't support me, get me the help that I needed and remove me from the torment that I was in, if that makes sense. So with that being said, today is the most important day of your life. It's the most important day of my life, right? What happened in the past, we can carry with us what happened in the past if and only it will help us today and in the future. If it's bringing harm, nightmares, and trauma and drama into your current life, I would suggest that you do the best you can with where you're currently at in life and try to work through that and not let it take over the rest of your life. I lost so many years, you guys. I lost so many years to the choices and the decisions that I made, the choices and decision that I made instead of asking for help. I continually thought that I was the strongest person in the room because I was carrying all this shit on my shoulders and I didn't need anything or anyone. I needed to be the sole support. I needed to be the person that held things together, right? Until I could no longer do it. So, um, and also please don't look too far into the future because that's going to create stress, anxiety and whatnot. So I literally, literally say that today is the first day of the rest of my life. I say that each and every day that I have the opportunity to wake up and breathe and go through the world. So with that being said, um, one thing that I've learned from listening to the first two chapters of the book today so far is that um, the term PTSD, I'm always curious about these things, right? So I took it for granted, I guess took it for granted that PTSD, post-traumatic um, stress disorder had always been around. But something told me to look up when was PTSD originally brought into our lexicon, right? Um, PTSD um, became a household name in 1980. It's in its first appearance of the DSM, um, the third edition. So that's the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. So PTSD is an anxiety disorder that develops in reaction to physical injury or severe um, mental, emotional, mental or emotional distress. So when people say or have said to me, especially family members, have said to me in the past that your childhood abuse or you, that happened, whatever that was, it happened so long ago. Why can't you get over it? Why can't you forget? Why can't you do this? What I want you to know is, is that trauma, however you interpret, per, receive, or internalize trauma, it can last with you for a lifetime. And for those people that ask you questions but it happened so long ago, but it happened 10 years ago. You act like it just happened today. For a lot of us, we are still reliving. We're still being traumatized by the nightmares, by the conversations, or by seeing something in someone with similar traits. So an example could be three men just having a great time walking down the street, having a conversation. One might happen to have a beer in their hand. Another one might happen to have a soda and another one might be eating chips. And if I'm walking down the same sidewalk facing them, going in the opposite direction, my cues, my alarm cues will go up and say, because of my experiences, I may think that these three people are coming to hurt me, right? And somebody else that's on the same, you know, path walking, they may clearly see someone having a beer in their hand, someone having a soda and someone eating a chips. But I don't see that and I don't feel that because of my experiences, right? So, I want to give you, my friend, whoever you might be, permission, permission 
to work through whatever is ailing you. I want to give you permission to be okay with where you're at, but just know that you don't have to stay where you're at. You can get help. You can join online groups. You can go see a therapist. You can talk to your pastor, but don't stay stuck and let life continue to pass you by. Please stop drugging whatever your drug of choice is. Please stop drugging in order, in order, my friend, to numb yourself because you're losing out on life. You're creating health conditions, if not now, in the future that will rob you of your life. Please stop. It's hard. It's hard. But whatever happened to you in the past and you survived, I almost guarantee you it was harder, right? So you and I, we're warriors. We can do hard things. And I I truly believe that healing is a lifelong process, a lifelong process. Okay. With that being said, um, if you want to read, um, if you want to read the book with me, please um, leave something in the comments and um, let's have a conversation about that. And maybe we can just kind of go through the chapters together or every four or five chapters and just start a book club type deal. Okay. Y'all, I'm a connector. I love people. I love people. Okay. So what else? Okay. So I am, I am going to try, can y'all see this? I'm going to try to have sardines. I ordered this from Amazon um, yesterday. So season brand sardines in water. I'm going to try something a little different. Um, I do OMAD once a day, one meal a day. And it's typically my burgers, my eggs. And um, like today I have some pork rinds that I'm going to have. And then sometimes it'll be like shrimp, but the shrimp might be like once a month. It's not my jam. Um, What did I have last night? Like, and then every now and again, a pork steak, pork chops aren't my jam and chicken isn't my jam. So I'm a pretty basic gal chuck pot roast. And now that it's the holiday weekend, I might be able to get some pork, um, some, what are those things called? Um, some ribeyes on sale. So I'm going to be on the hunt for that. But anyway, so this is a 12 pack. And what my deal is, is I'm going to try, I'm going to trade in one burger patty. Cause I usually eat between, depending on what I'm eating, I usually eat about six to eight quarter pound, um, a quarter pound beef patties. So what I'm going to do, it just depends on how hungry I am or how many eggs I have with it. So it can just range a pound and a half, two pounds of meat, right? So I'm going to trade in you guys, one of my patties for, um, one of these servings of sardines. And I had tried sardines for the first time about a year ago. And, um, the brand that I bought was an African brand. I didn't read the label and whatnot. And, um, of course it was full of all the bad oils and whatnot. Cause I flipped over the can afterwards, but I said, I need this to be flavored. You know, it's like a cayenne or something like that. And it had the little heads on them. And I was like, I can't do, I bought three cans. I only did one can and threw the other two away. So I'm going to try. So this is in water. It doesn't have seed oils. And I'll pop back on and let you let you guys know how it went. So I haven't eaten yet today. So I'm probably like a half hour behind my normal schedule. But I'm going to try one and I'll let you know. And then as far as natural hair, that was another addiction of mine, having um, weaves, doing all these braids, you know, wigs and whatnot. And on Mother's Day of this year, I decided to uh, go natural, at least until I turned 57. And that is on September the 1st. But the way it's going down, you guys, I will probably stay natural indefinitely because I have a lot of alopecia around my edges and whatnot. 
And I usually twist my hair with gel and a lot of oil and stuff and just wear a wrap or whatever. But today it is what it is. But anyway, so since I have decided to go natural, I mean, that's one of my last, um, last cloaks or last things that I've covered myself up with. I'm pretty transparent, but I'm like, oh, I don't have the hair anymore. I can't hide behind my wigs, my personality and da, 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 da. So we're going to see how that pans out. But it's like something that has been um, removed. I just feel lighter. You know, you know how some people love their makeup and stuff like that. I do love makeup, but it, it's it's too much of a hassle because of the way I work out and then I have to go to work and stuff. So I don't wear makeup that often, but you know how some people wear so much makeup that they're hidden, you know, it's their safety blanket, their safety measure. That's how my wigs and weaves were. It was another one of my addictions. I always happen to have my hair fresh. I got two wigs in the car. I got two under the kitchen sink and four up in the bedroom and then six down the hall, you know, and all that stuff. Not literally, but that's the way it was. I always have something to put on my head, but I feel lighter. I feel freer. I feel a little more transparent. All right, guys. Okay. So I've talked enough. I've talked enough. But what I need you guys to do is to please like, please share, please subscribe. Um, support us sister out here. Okay. Please support me. I'm trying to get to 500, hopefully before the end of May. And if you have a story that you would like to share. I would love to hear from you. Please leave something in the comments or you can just email me at coachroseaj at gmail.com or roseajcoats at gmail.com. And um, I've started um, the Carnivore Connection on um, Facebook. It's a free Facebook group. Um, I'm essentially just getting warmed up. And the reason that I'm doing that is because Adrian, um, Adrian Gledhill from The Biggest Loser Carnivore, she and I had a conversation a few weeks ago, and it was the conversation that was after the live conversation that we had here on YouTube that really got me to thinking and got me compelled to do this group. So um, Adrian will be a part of the group as often as she can. But right now I'm just toying with what I want the vision for that to be, but I want it to be something where everyone feels welcome, regardless of their dietary protocol, where people can support and encourage each other. And of course, so we can bring you some lives and some conversations ranging from friendship, ranging from recipes to workouts or what have you. So more on that to come. But please join us there. I'll post the links to all that good stuff in in the show notes probably <laughs> by um, tomorrow because I got to go eat, y'all. And then I'm doing a live at 7. But anyway, be good to yourselves. Please put your CPR masks on yourself first and foremost. Please take care of yourself. Save yourself. Be your best advocate before before you go out and try to save the world. Love yourself. All right. All right, guys. Love you. Drop something in the comments and I'll holla soon. Bye-bye.